So what is Lewis's argument that naturalism is a claim that is self-defeating? Here we've laid it on the board. We're going to first assume that the naturalist is right. Assume that naturalism is true. And also assume what we both agree on, both the naturalist and the supernaturalist, that knowledge is there, that we do have knowledge. Now, what is it that distinguishes knowledge from merely a true belief? Because just because you have a belief and it's true doesn't mean it's knowledge. For example, maybe there is a God, but I have no way of proving it. Then I would have a true belief. I would have maybe faith in God, but no one would call that faith knowledge. What makes the faith that something is true and turns it into knowledge that is true? Pretty much everyone agrees that if I know something, then I have good reasons for the belief. In other words, that the totality of the evidence leads rationally or logically to the belief that I hold. So three, we have knowledge only if our process of reasoning is reliable. If our very process of reasoning from the evidence to our conclusions is faulty, then you can't say we have knowledge, even if you have a true belief. Say, for example, that I believe that two plus two equals four because the tooth fairy told me in a dream. Now, obviously I have a true belief. Two plus two does equal four, but you can't say that I know it because my reasoning is faulty, isn't it? Just because I dream of the tooth fairy telling me that two plus two equals four, it doesn't logically follow that therefore two plus two does equal four. So all of our knowledge depends on the validity of our reasoning, even the fact that right now I see my hand before my face. You might say, well, that's not reasoning, you just see it. No, I see an image, I don't see my hand. And then I make several assumptions that what looks like my hand is my hand because I'm not dreaming, number one. Number two, I'm not in the matrix. And so therefore, I subtly assume certain things that together with the sense data that's before my eyes lead logically, hopefully, to the existence of my hand. So even my visual beliefs are grounded in my belief that my concepts conform to reality, divide reality correctly, and that the data from my senses are evidence that logically or rationally lead to the conclusion that my hand exists or likely exists. So thus, all of my knowledge depends on the validity of my reasoning processes. If my reasoning processes are faulty, then like fruit from the poison tree, all of the conclusions that grow out of that reasoning process are poisoned also. So, what is Lewis's claim? His claim is that if naturalism is true, then it will follow logically that none of our reasoning processes are valid, are reliable in getting us at truth. And so, it would follow that we have no knowledge because naturalism is assumed to be true, if we do have knowledge, then what? Then our reasoning is reliable. But if naturalism is true, then our reasoning is not reliable. And therefore, by three, we have no knowledge. But by two, we do have knowledge. And so the belief that naturalism is true, the claim that it is true, together with two and four, lead us to a contradiction. Therefore, naturalism is self-defeating. The minute I claim it, coupled with the plausible claim that I do have knowledge, it will follow that I won't, don't have knowledge, and therefore leads to its own defeat because it leads to a contradiction. So, of course, the main thing that Lewis has to prove, I hope you all see, is four. He has to prove that the truth of naturalism undermines the reliability of our reasoning.
And we, in our next segment, will then show his proof before.